Hi there, I'm Peter Millard and in this video series I invite you to join me on my journey starting out in CNC. That's coming up next. Now if you watch a lot of maker YouTube channels, especially our American cousins, then you won't help but have noticed that the vast majority of them seem to have acquired a CNC machine in the last couple of years. Uh, in fact, probably not just a CNC machine, but a plasma and a laser as well. Uh, CNC machines, of course, computer numerical control, a sort of computer guided router working in three dimensions that can cut intricate shapes repeatedly. They look like really interesting little bits and pieces. Uh, and I've got a couple of projects uh, that they would be absolutely perfect for. But when you start looking into these things, the vast majority of CNC machines are either American, certainly the higher end hobby ones uh, are only available in the US or direct from China. And of course, if I'm putting down a decent chunk of change for these things, I'd quite like to have a little bit of advice beforehand, uh, preferably from somebody who's a little closer to home than a few thousand miles away. Uh, I don't know anything about CNC machines, but luckily for me, I know a few people who do. So I loaded up my car with my YouTube paraphernalia and headed out to Essex to have a chat with my friends at Ooze Nest. Uh, so Ryan, uh, nice to see you again. Thanks, yeah, for, uh, thanks you. for having me around. Uh, if, if somebody comes to you, much like me, for example, and says, oh, I quite like CNC, but I don't really know anything about them. What, what, yeah. you know, what, what, where do I start? Yeah. Are, are you just going to sell them the most expensive thing you make? or No, of course you're not, because no. you, you want them to come back to you for yeah. all the other bits and pieces. Yeah. So, I mean, where, where do you start as, as the, yeah. the, the sales pitch? Do you start with size or... Yeah, you usually what? want to find out sort of, yeah, what they're planning to machine. Yeah. So materials and size. Right. So that basically dictates what size machine you want okay. to get and what drive you want to get. Gotcha. What drive system. So if you're just planning on doing MDF sheets, yeah. plywood sheets, then you really want the biggest machine so you yeah. can get a half an 8x4 on it. And then a bigger machine is belt drive only, which is a slightly weaker system than the smaller machines. But if you're just doing wood, uh, wood only, then it's more than capable of cutting MDF, plywood, 80mm thick. You still do the other materials. It just can't do them as quick as you would find the screwdriver can do. Right. It. Okay. Uh, is, is the so a screwdriver or belt drive is one more accurate than the other? Yeah. Or? So a screwdriver runs on an ASME screw like this. Okay. So these run inside these channels. Gotcha. And then so the machine is mechanically held in place. So even with the machine switched off like this is, you can't move it uh, about. Okay. Um, Whereas with a the belt, there's a little bit of. Yeah. So with a belt drive that runs off a belt like this. So when it's turned off, so there's always be a little bit of flex yeah. or whatever. You know. And it's always got the belt tension and the stretch. So when it changes direction, before it can change direction, it has to overcome the stretch in the belt. Yeah. It's not a lot, but it it does add up. So yeah. over over a bigger yeah over a bigger yeah. run, a bigger cut. It so all we say on the screw drive, you can get 0.1 mil accuracy, okay. and on a belt drive, you can get 0.2 mil accuracy. For sign work. That'll do, you know, yeah. <laughs> a fifth or a tenth of a millimetre. Okay. But when you're cutting like aluminium plates like this, then mm. that's where you really yeah. want a small screwdriver because they need to be precise. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, uh, I'm, I'm only ever going to be cutting MDF yeah. and plywood, maybe a little bit of, I don't know, polycarbonate board or acrylic or something. Yeah. Thin, you know, three mil or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and let's say I'd like to do, uh, what's, what's the... Okay, so you do a half a sheet, so it'll do 12 mil, 1200 mil wide. Yeah, 1200. Is that the cutting area? Uh, yeah, so it can do slightly over that. It's about right. 1250 by 1250. Okay. That's the biggest machine we do. And then this is our smallest machine. Right. And this can do about 550 by 500. Okay. Um, but if you're, all, if you're going to get a thousand by a thousand or smaller, basically just always go for a screwdriver. Right. Because it's, it's a better machine. Yeah, you yeah. might as well. Yeah. It only costs about 150 pound more. Right. If you can go bigger, then you have to switch to the belt drive version. Yeah. But Generally, everyone gets the screwdriver. Yeah, sure. So this is this is a 550 uh, cut, more or less. More or less, yeah, yeah. 550 and about 500 deep. Um, all the specs on our website. Yeah, sure, of course. Bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have this back area here, which the machine can't get to, just because yeah. of the plates. But then you can actually have seen one of Ryan's, the other Ryan's yeah. videos about it. You can actually move the yeah. move the the workpiece through if you need to do something longer. Yeah. So, so if you had a yeah, if you got a five whatever this is 550 width of cut yeah you could actually cut almost unlimited pretty unlimited much length yeah. provided you can register it as you as you move it yeah. through every 500 mil or, or whatever yeah yeah so we've done the video on doing that yeah so if you've got the biggest one that can do a four foot by four foot then you've got to push it through once you've got eight foot eight by yeah, four sure. foot sheet 
Um, you just need to support it front or back, whichever way yeah. you're pushing through. Um, and you just got to clamp it down, have a register point, and it pretty much cuts accurately when you're pushing through. That's fine as well. Fantastic. Uh, okay, so screw drive, better, belt yeah. drive, good. Um, yeah. the, the cutting bit is a router or a spindle or yeah, so, so it's it's flexible in that you can put whatever you want on yeah, it. Yeah, so you? we supply it with outer mount or a router if you're yeah. trying to add your own spindle. So you have your 80mm wide extrusion here yeah. with four slots of 20mm spacing so you can just mount anything you want onto it. Okay. And then we do like an option with the mount and rat mount, uh, router mount only. Yeah. So with that you can add your own router, spindle yeah. and then we supply the Makita Dewalt as another addition and then we also supply a mill kit so these are a good range of end mills which okay. you can use and these are end, end mills are just like fancy router cutters basically yes yeah, so yeah. forgive my ignorance yeah yeah i'm just talking yeah. to a, like talking to a child basically um so so that yeah they're just they're, they're cutters yeah wow really fine ones too yeah so these are quarter inch or eighth inch shank and with this kit we do goes down to right. the 16th inches wow. um we recommend the maximum end mill size you use on this is eight mil. Okay. So we don't recommend going up to the half inch size collets. No, no, sure. That Makita's the, the the dead ringer for the or rather the katsu is the, the, the dead ringer for that yeah. reason. I've actually got a katsu, I really like them. I might try using that for this. Yeah. See how it goes. Because it's exactly the same diameter. Yeah. And that comes with or you we can get a uh, an adapter ring yeah. or whatever you so call it. So if you it. just send us an email and then say you want the shim, we'll supply it free of charge and that goes exactly. inside our mount and then that just fit nicely around that. Yeah. So this mount, it's the Makita, the Dewalt and the Bosch uh, GK600 I think yeah, it's called. One, yeah. So it yeah. fits them free by standard and then you can adapt it to fit any other oh, yeah. router. Oh no, that's a quarter inch collet and obviously you need to step it down to a whatever yeah. it was. Uh, and of course you have a dust fairly serious looking dust collection yeah. uh, skirt. Yeah, so this is uh, another option we do, um, the dust extractor. So just a dust shoe we supply. Yeah. Um, it's a good project actually to make on your machine yeah, when you sure. get it, but if you want to start off straight away with one, yeah. then we supply one so this just disconnects magnetically. Oh, right. So you oh. can easily change your bit without having to disconnect uh, your shoe. Yeah. Just put it back on. Um, the dust shoe, the, the brush is especially made for CNC applications because if you use really hard dust shoes, when it's going over your bit, it can end up moving the router around. It's yeah, it's too much drag on it. Yeah, you know, yeah. so these yeah. are nice soft ones. Yeah, it's, not, um, it's not the sort of thing you have at the bottom of your garage door, nah, it, let's be honest. Nah. You've got a, is that a controller board yeah. there as well? So this, this is a new thing, isn't it, you, you were mentioning to me earlier? Yeah, so um, in December we switched our board to what's called the Duet controller. Right. This is mainly a 3D printing board up until now. I was going to say, I've heard of that from, from the 3D, 3D printing side of things. Mm, so we're pretty much one of the first people to put it on the CNC machine. So what this gives us is that super smooth motion control. Um, you've got control over the currents, the steps per millimeter, all through the software. It's also infinite or Wi-Fi based, so you can connect to it mm. over your Wi-Fi network. Um, the files that you're sending to your machine are all stored on the controller. So you just need to set your machine up, put the file on the controller, press send, and then you can disconnect and it'll carry on doing its thing. And you're saying it connects through a, a web browser and, and yeah. Ryan was showing me before, it actually on his phone. Yeah. So you can actually control it from your phone. Yeah. And, and of course, because the files are stored on the controller board, if you're doing something regularly, you can keep them yeah. on there and you effectively just press yeah. play and just, it, it, yeah. Yeah, make sure you've got something underwritten. Pretty much, yeah. It goes. So files and the control software is all stored on the boards. It doesn't matter which device you're connected to your machine with, you get all your files access to them. You can set your work positions all like the old controller. So say you're just cutting the same thing over and over again, yeah. it will be set up the same each time. What about the software side? I see you've got a Vectric. Yeah, so um, we recommend using the, the software by Vectric. Um, so they specialise in making CAM software. It also has a lot of CAD functionality built in. So they do um, free versions, Cut 2D, VCarve, Aspire. Right. Cut 2D is pretty much just 2D work on 2D planes, sort of like this inset you see here yes. and profiles and stuff like that. Their VCarve, is the same as Cut2D but also does engraving work and can cut one 3D model. And then the Aspire one can do all what VCAR can do, but it's got modeling functionalities and you can cut more than one model. Um, okay. But then you I can just, also I just use- want to cut bits of MDF, I really. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Bits of plywood, yeah. <laughs> but you can also use other CAM software with the machine as long as you can export your G-code from it, such as right. Fusion 360 is a popular one that people yeah. use with our machine, uh, SketchUCAM, 
or this lowe's out there yeah. now which you can use my, but my head's getting ready to explode yeah so but, but basically you need to export the file at, in a particular type so that yeah. the machine can read it so the yeah. controller board yeah can read yeah. it and uh, can you do that over wi-fi to the to the board yeah, yeah so yeah, you so. just wi-fi it connect to the board in your browser upload it to the board over wi-fi and then you just press send and it'll just run it um yeah as long as your file set up correctly it's a whole new world isn't it? Yeah. Oh great! Well, uh, thank you very much for for showing me, and explaining the basics yeah. to me. Uh, people can find Ooze Nest, of course, Ooze Nest KUK uh, yeah. website. You're uh, you're going to have a big stand at Maker Central as well. Yeah, coming up uh, in May. I think we're we're a couple of stands behind you in the same sort of block. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there as well. Yeah. So we're right opposite the main stage next yeah. to Vectric. So you oh, can yeah, ask right, both of, of us. For both sides of the thing, the mechanical side and the software side, you can ask them. Right. Um, you're there, there's a lot of people there. We have yeah. a machine running inside an enclosure, um, yeah. and then we have a demo machine. We're also releasing an enclosure soon for the machine, so oh, if you've okay. got a, like, like a workshop, you don't yeah. dust everywhere, yeah. all the noise as well, all the noise. that contain that. So that'd be I mean, it is a router running, and you will have the extractor running, so there is a certain amount of noise, yeah, it's always noise attached annoying. to it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, what do you expect? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you very much for, for explaining that to me. Um, I've got a few decisions to make, really, now, haven't I? Yeah. And uh, we'll see what uh, see what we can come up with. Uh, fantastic. Ryan yeah. from Ooze Nest, thank you very much indeed. Today. Yeah, That's no great. problem. So a little while after my very fruitful discussion afternoon spent with the guys at Usness, a couple of large boxes arrived for me, quite weighty, quite heavy, full of interesting little bits and pieces. So this is the Ooze Nest Workbee. 750 by 750 mil uh, CNC machine. I've got the full kit here. Uh, comes in two packets, uh, packages, one with the, all the extrusion and bits in and the screw drives in my particular case, and then the other one that has all the other bits and pieces in. I'm just gonna quickly unbox these now, make sure that everything's there, just do a quick run through uh, on a checklist, uh, and then we'll get into what each of these little bits and pieces does.